regrets. Simon Pegg has a few. Hello, I started this gangster sh this the mother thanks I get. Hello, I started this gangster sh It is, it's sad, it's sad. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You're listening to Ethan Van Stiver, 25 year veteran of this comic book industry. I am the creator of Cyberfrog. My comic book, Cyberfrog Blood Honey, is in its second to last day of crowdfunding. Uh, if you have not yet backed Cyberfrog Blood Honey and would like to pre order a copy of this great comic book, uh, there's a link in the description below and you should do it soon. Uh, I am the illustrator of Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life and a great big Star Wars fan. Uh, what is Simon Pegg doing? Uh, what is he doing? Why is he getting involved in this? Simon Pegg, why are you getting involved? You know, you picked a fight. Uh, you picked a fight with uh, Roundhead Ryan Johnson on behalf of J.J. Abrams not too long ago. You said, hey, I was talking to J.J. Abrams, and he didn't like what Ryan Johnson did uh, about who Ray's parents were. He didn't like that at all. That's not what he had planned. Simon Pegg, why are you, why are you looking for a fight? Why do you want to fight Ryan Johnson? No, I mean, why do you want to fight Ryan Johnson? I understand why somebody might want to fight Ryan Johnson, but why you? Let's find out what's going on with his feelings about Jar Jar Binks. He has deep feelings about it. Earlier this month, Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmed Best revealed on Twitter that the backlash over the off malign Star Wars character had led him to nearly end his own life. Now, actor Simon Pegg, who was among those, I get it now, who was among those who mocked the character admits that he feels guilty for his part in the negativity. I see. I see. Uh, in an interview with Now This, Peg admits that he's ashamed that he contributed to the hate and negativity that led Best to want to end his own life over his portrayal of Jar Jar. Hey, he did a fine job, Simon. What the hell's going on? He did a fine job as Jar Jar. Why? Why did you torment him? Simon Pegg, why did you torment him? Don't you feel any remorse at all? Uh, yeah, he does. I feel so ashamed of the fact that there was actually a victim, a human victim in that, Pegg said. I think most people uh, were regarding Jar Jar Binks like he was a real creature and wailing on him for being annoying or whatever or not liking uh, him. But there was a person behind that. There were several people behind. There was also George Lucas uh, behind that. Uh, and I read that and I just thought, Christ, I'm, I'm one of those people. It makes me feel awful. Well, that's good. I'm glad you feel uh, bad about this. Uh, that maybe uh, you read, or did you not, uh, read that cartoon by that inflation porn cartoonist? Did you read that cartoon by the inflation porn cartoonist whose name I cannot recall and history will likely also not recall? Did you read that cartoon uh, about uh, all of the people who bully Star Wars characters? Now listen, I have gotten drunk uh, on occasion and uh, said a thing or two about the Ugnaughts. I said they were short little piss ants. All right, I said it. Uh, I don't know if that had any, had any direct result on any of the little people uh, that inhabited those Ugnaught costumes. I'm not sure. I don't think about it. I, I didn't think about it. I was drunk. I was drunk. Uh, but I will say uh, that the inflation uh, porn cartoonist uh, and his cartoon didn't mention any negative ramifications on the lives of those little people who inhabited the Ugnaught's costumes. And I'll say it again. Uh, even sober, I'll say it. They were weird. Those Ugnaughts were weird. Weird. Uh, you, on the other hand, uh, were directly responsible uh, for Jar Jar Binks and uh, probably solely responsible for Jar Jar Binks. I think you led the harassment campaign against Jar Jar Binks. 20 years next year, I faced a media backlash that still affects my career today. This is what he said. Uh, this was the place I almost ended my life. It's still hard to talk about. Uh, I survived, and now this little guy, he's talking about Simon Pegg? Oh, no, he's talking about his son or son. His son uh, is my gift for survival. Would this be a good story for my solo show? Uh, let me know. Yeah, I think you should take it to Broadway. It sounds great. Take it straight to Broadway. Uh, <laughs> Jar Jar Banks, depressing all-dancing show. Uh, 
for those unaware, uh, best character Jar Jar Binks appeared in the Star Wars prequel trilogy, and while he went on to collaborate with George Lucas on other Star Wars projects such as The Clone Wars, I'm watching that right now. I can't wait. Hey, Simon Pegg, I can't wait to see Jar Jar Binks in The Clone Wars. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to celebrate his work in The Clone Wars. Star Wars fandom didn't receive Jar Jar particularly well, with the character ending up a polarizing one. Yeah. That quickly became the subject of jokes from Simon Pegg and mockery from Simon Pegg. Uh, Pegg himself even made Jar Jar jokes and has long been outspoken about his dislike for the prequel trilogy. I don't understand how you could be that cruel. Uh, now, though, Pegg acknowledges that toxicity uh, from within Simon Pegg uh, and other uh, fandoms has become problematic, specifically noting Star Wars, The Last Jedi star Kelly Marie Tran, who reportedly left social media over alleged bullying related to her role in in the film. Uh, that is uh, not true. Kelly Marie Tran uh, left social media because there is uh, a social media blackout. Uh, people who are working on the set are not allowed to use smartphones or iPads or anything like that. They have to use primitive old style uh, telephones, you know, the kind of flip phones from like uh, 1992. Uh, they have to use those uh, to prevent leakage. Ew, leakage. Yeah, leakage. Uh, they have to do that. So uh, Kelly Marie Tran uh, did leave social media uh, for that reason, uh, the, a reason of uh, NDA non-disclosure agreement. Uh, and there are some SJWs who picked on uh, picked that up uh, and decided to run with it and make it a fake story uh, to condemn those of us who think that The Last Jedi was a terrible movie, although we loved Kelly Marie Tran's portrayal of Rose Tico. Uh, that movie sucked. Uh, and uh, there is uh, a crisis management firm that is using uh, Rose Tico as a means of, it's called damseling, uh, as a means of silencing critics, silencing critics uh, of Lucasfilm's SJW uh, Star Wars agenda, which has ended up costing them $80 million at the box office. That's how much of a flop Solo, a Star Wars story was. Solo, a Star Wars story, flopped to the tune of $80 million. And so this canard is floating around the internet. It is not true. It is not true. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't condemn Simon Pegg. There is no diplomacy in that, no empathy uh, in Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg is becoming very, very ins insular as a human being. Uh, he's becoming very self-driven, selfist. Uh, his opinions, his needs, his wants. Uh, he feels very sorry for Kelly Marie Tran. Uh, well, apologize to her then uh, for what you did to Jar Jar Binks and probably what you wanted to do to Rose Tico uh, because she was just in a film, a fucking film, that's all it is. None of this matters, none of it. Calm down, Mr. Pegg. It does matter, it does matter. Uh, it matters to the tune of $80 million to a major corporation. Uh, of course it matters, it matters to them. That is why uh, this uh, whole thing uh, story has been invented, and that is why you are perpetuating it. Um, I appreciate the fact that you are becoming a martyr to it, though. You are you are actually uh, sacrificing yourself on the altar, admitting that you were so cruel, so very cruel, uh, to the actor who played Jar Jar Binks uh, that he contemplated suicide. Uh, I think it would be nice if everyone just got on, he added, you know, and stopped being so passive-aggressive. I agree. Let's stop being so passive aggressive. Uh, what do I think about Peg's comments? Uh, let us know in the comments section below. Well, let me see what people think. I am glad Simon Peg is clearing his conscience about his non-stop harassment of, oops, not if, of, of, jar, jar, uh, at the passive, aggressive expense of rational critics of Oops, Disney, Lucasfilm. 
Nice try. The fandom menace will never die. Period. Return. Boom. Uh, log in to post. I gotta log in to post that. Oh, I will. I will log in. But nice try. The fandom menace will never die. Oh, wait. A Jar Jar? That would mean like his head was partially open. All right. I'll fix that in a minute. Hey, want to follow me on Twitter? Okay, cool. I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. Talk to you there. Show your friends you support independent comics while showing the world who you back in the fight against the swarm with the brand new Cyberfrog t-shirt from Crypto Fashion and Comic Artist Pro Secret. Sizes come in small to 5XL and take your choice of colors between navy blue, white, and black. And if you haven't yet, go ahead and order the Fandom Menace, Go Get Daddy's Belt, Tico, and Soilo t-shirts as well. Link is below in the description. You're going to look great. People love these shirts. They fit wonderfully. Thank you very much. Hello, potential Indiegogo backers. Hello, friends. My name is Ethan Van Skyver. I'm a comic book creator who worked for 20 years for Marvel and DC Comics on books like Green Lantern, Flash, Superman, Batman, and X-Men. But before that, I had a comic book called Cyberfrog. Now, Cyberfrog lasted from 1993 to 1998, and then it stopped when I went to go work for DC Comics. Now I want to tell the story of where Cyberfrog has been for the last 20 years. I want to write, pencil, ink a book called Cyberfrog Blood Honey that tells the story of gigantic alien hornets that come to Earth and conquer it, sending Cyberfrog into deep hibernation, where he emerges now in the year 2018 into a completely alternate reality, a new world where these hornets have taken over, devastated humanity, using human skin to make gigantic wasp hives and harvesting human blood to make honey to feed their young very few humans still exist. But it's up to Cyberfrog to save what's left of humanity and turn back the damage that's been done by these wasps with his brother Salamandroid and his friend Heather Swain. I want you to help me do this. We're going to get colors by Kyle Ritter. He's a fantastic colorist and he's going to make this book sing. Uh, I'd like this to be a 48 page one shot prestige format part one of four. So I'm asking you to help me launch the very first Cyberfrog Blood Honey epic graphic novel. Are you in? Will you help me? I hope so. Let's get this frog jumping again. If you enjoyed this video and want to become part of this community, subscribe to this channel by clicking the Laughing Man Face logo right on your screen. Ring the bell for notifications as well. You'll never miss a live chat. And stay tuned, another video by Comic Artist Pro Secrets is coming right up.